received the report from the ad hoc committee that did a study on amenities, all right? And as you can see, it's, a, it's an informal meeting. I'm, I want to welcome uh, those of you who, who came to see what we're doing. I was hoping to be even more, but it's a good thing there wasn't because we're out of chair. I would have gotten more anyway. But this is the first time we're going to use this room here, and we're going to see how it works. Uh, and uh, we could hold a lot more people if we had to. Right? Uh, we're going to get input from, uh, from the people who are here during the meeting. And I'm not sure how we'll do that. Put your hand up and we'll depart from the rules and see what happens. But uh, I want to make it relatively casual. But the only comments we're going to take today are those related to amenities. All right. And I'm going to put, make that a pretty broad subject. But anyway, uh, we'll welcome you here. I'd like to introduce the members of the ad hoc committee who are here. First of all, John McLaughlin, Director McLaughlin, uh, chaired the committee. Did he chair the committee? Uh, yes. Okay. But he was called away on a family emergency on Saturday. I think he's down in Florida, and uh, he was unable to be here. We've got uh, Dick Dietrich. Dick? Yes. We've got uh, Phil Quinto. We've got Barbara Coughlin. And uh, John Andalino is uh, at a doctor's appointment this morning, I believe. He's not here. And I think Gary Wright was a member of the committee for a while, but is no longer a member of the committee. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. Uh, what did I forget? Did I forget anything, Tom? How about Barbara? Did you uh, yes. mention Barbara? Barbara? All right. Do we got any comments from the board before we, we, we receive the report? Yes, Pete. Yeah, just to be clear, uh, we're, we're to receive the report today for information and uh, reaction and questions and not expecting any action to be taken. Is that correct? Uh, no. Uh, well, what, there's a lot of things. I'm, 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 my expectations on this are to see what they have to, have to say. I've read their report. And by the way, there are sufficient copies. You all should be able to see it. Anybody need any copies? Okay. Phyllis? She's got to some. Huh? She's not making more. She's not making more. We'll give you copies of the report. Okay. Uh, I've studied the report. I'm sure the board directors have all yes. copies in advance. But we purposely have not discussed this report among ourselves. Uh, uh, I've made no uh, advanced conclusions or comments about it because we want to hear what the, what the members have to say. And, and my hopes are that we're going to get some information that's going to cause us to, uh, to come up with some needs of things we have to do as a board and go from there. So, uh, you know, I have no foregone conclusions. I've just got some hopes. That's all. all right. So. I just didn't want to <laughs> disappoint anybody who was expecting this board to take some action today. No, yeah. no, this is a and, and nobody is such a meeting because it's important. I don't want it lost. I don't want it lost in, a, in, a, in an agenda of, of five or ten things. I want to say uh, it's changing. as important as I think it is. Okay. All right. So, with no more comment, then we'll proceed. We did not expect that there would be any conclusions. I understand, but some other people may have other expectations. <laughs> okay, fire away, Dick. Uh, I, I, I first, I'd like to acknowledge Barbara because she did an awful lot of work in preparing the PowerPoint and did many revisions on it, and uh, she should be recognized. Um, when this committee started, um, we had to decide uh, what scope we would deal with um, and we did come up with some general guidelines, some general rules to uh, pretty much govern ourselves. But uh, as we go through this uh, slide presentation, I think most of that will be evident. Um, but I did want to emphasize that we do perceive this to be a, um, uh, a long-term thing. The, uh, we decided early on we would not deal with personalities, and um, I think we decided early on we would not de uh, deal with any specific fees for any specific amenities. Uh, and uh, with that understanding, I think we'll we'll just proceed through the slides. Um, I think you can understand that um, dealing with an issue like this can be overwhelming. Um, so um, we determine objectives um, as they are listed on the screen. And um, we thought our role was to uh, increase membership, maximize participation uh, with 
without impacting on OP income. And I think we recognize that there is a fine line between participation and fees. Uh, as an example, uh, the more members, um, the less the fee would have to be, but there is a balance in there somewhere. We did not determine what that was, but there is a balance. Um, and I think as we go through the slides, that would be recognized. We uh, pretty much uh, focused on the amenities listed, which are the amenities that require a fee. Uh, we recognize the enormous contribution of all of the amenities in the fines, but uh, pretty much concentrated on, uh, on these. We had uh, structured interviews and discussions and emails with uh, staff members, uh, realtors, uh, advisory committee personnel. We reviewed budget and uh, membership data. Um, and I believe that in the report you received, um, the uh, conclusions from the interviews with staff and realtors is included as an appendix. Some general conclusions we arrived at, um, obviously demographics uh, are changing. Uh, they change uh, at Ocean Pines, just as they change everywhere. Um, so whatever conclusions are arrived at, they should anticipate that demographics is changing, will continue to change, and that a procedure or policy should be arrived at uh, that is independent of those changing um, demographics. Um, we, we found in our investigation that we could not locate a strategic enemy, amenity policy. Uh, we could not find a central marketing plan for amenities. Um, we could not find a standard procedure for developing fees for any specific amenity. Um, we concluded each amenity has its own unique uh, challenges. Um, we, did, we concluded that customer service, uh, actually this was a strong conclusion, that customer service needed improvement across all amenities. Um, that the impact of special interest groups um, and we're specifically thinking here of the individual uh, committees, uh, advisory committees, and again we recognize a balance needed here. Obviously people are going to protect their own interests, so uh, a group representing the marina is going to uh, try to present favorable issues with regard to the marina. However, there needs to be uh, some policy or procedure which balances their particular interest with the interest of the whole community or the whole board or whatever. Um, we found um, confusion regarding the actually enormous number of membership type fees and uh, in talking with many people found that to be somewhat confusing. Any questions on any of that? Yeah. And, and, and actually, I just, I'm a spokesperson here. I was not to do this, okay? John was to do this, but uh, I brought expert people with me here, and they're going to have to answer some of these questions. Okay, hey, hey uh, Bill, uh, I'd rather him give us the report yes. and have the directors respond, keep, keep notes, rather than have everybody chime in, I, you know, but... I, I want to hear what you have to say. Don't get me wrong, but please make a note of that, and we'll get you. Otherwise, we may, you know, I just want to make, keep it to the directors right now. Okay. Or 
would have been better even for holding off on the directors until he finishes the presentation. Unless there's a, a specific question about what he's trying to say, because he might answer the question in the next in the next slide. Okay. Yeah. But yeah. And you, can you tell us that if that's the case? Okay. What would, would your preference be? I, it, it makes no difference to okay. me. Um, I I think it uh, might be more uh, efficient if we went through the whole report and then. I'll try to react to questions when we can. I'd be happy to do that because I got a lot of questions. I don't want to interrupt. I don't know what's going on either. Okay. So. Press on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, some recommendations that uh, we offered. Um, uh, we would consider amenities at a, as a quality of life issue. Um, and. Uh, would encourage safe, updated, and attractive facilities, uh, recognizing that the economy at the uh, moment is not strong. We felt it necessary uh, to mention that it would be important to keep all amenities uh, in, in an attractive manner. I think in general felt that it would be best to consider uh, the amenities as one composite um, rather than to break down amenities and say this one loses money, this one gains money, whatever, and try to treat for financial purposes the amenities as a whole. And um, have each of the amenities uh, work in a business-like manner, but treat for financial purposes all of the amenities, uh, all in, including the fee ones, which we are discussing, but not just those, all the amenities uh, as a single composite. And I think with all of the people that we talked with, um, Customer service uh, was a very large priority. And uh, it's not uh, designed for any one individual or any one group. It would be a commitment for all people, the staff, the committees, the individual members of the, uh, mem individual members of the amenities um, to address this issue. As you're going to learn, technology is what my one of my stronger points. Uh, okay, here we, go. we felt it important that a marketing professional be responsible for all amenities, and that uh, one individual assume that responsibility. Uh, develop uh, a marketing plan, a policy program that uh, maximizes participation and enhances uh, community pride in Ocean Pines uh, through the amenities. Uh, we felt that incentive packages could be uh, investigated um, and that they would, could help in attracting new members. We felt that there should be a standard pricing policy. Um, a process or a procedure whereby all, um, all amenities would be treated in a fair and light manner. Um, let me just offer an example. Uh, I'm not saying this is what should be done, but as an example here, uh, a policy or a procedure which would say we are interested in obtaining the, um, the uh, operational expenses uh, for the amenity, divide that by the number of people, determine a fee, and then offer uh, as an example a 20% reduction for people who are residents of Ocean Pines. It would serve as an incentive 
uh, for residents and it would help residents understand that uh, there is an advantage to being a resident. Um, we felt the uh, Ocean Pines people should um, reflect a, a larger discount, uh, which is offered there. Um, it was felt that pricing structures sometimes change annually, and it might be better to keep a pricing structure in place for a few years uh, to determine the impact that it has on um, the membership as well as the income. And of course, a continual review of incentive packages and amenities. Uh, recommendations under operations um, would be to conduct exit interviews with those who leave a, uh, uh, an amenity and uh, why they so chose to do that. Um, uh, in general, creating a friendly, welcoming atmosphere uh, to all new members, uh, probably more the job of the individual amenity and the uh, advisory committee of the respective amenity. We would uh, encourage that uh, present members, staff, um, become more cognizant of uh, their effort at inclusiveness and the socialization value of the amenity. Uh, somehow acquire input from um, the members regarding customer satisfaction. <coughs> I think we indicated earlier that uh, we feel each of the individual amenities should operate in a business-like manner. Um, and if you deal with this balance between uh, an appropriate uh, membership size and the fees, and uh, we didn't feel that we had the expertise to make judgments there, but recognize that um, that is a requirement and that there seems to be a lot of confusion about that that concept among people in the in, uh, living in ocean pines, whether they participate in amenities or do not participate in amenities, and that there should be a process that um, or a policy that uh, has a, a, a specific. Uh, objective of evaluating the policy changes made for each of the amenities. In other words, if, an, if, an, if a change occurs, uh, how do we determine whether it was a good change, bad change? Uh, does it affect membership? Does it affect the uh, cost? Um, and there does not seem to be a policy or procedure in place to do that for all amenities. We uh, found in the process of going through the operational charts and, and things that um, we feel there ought to be better clarification of the role of each of these components um, in the amenity programs. Uh, the, the role of the board, general manager, finance people, department chair people, uh, and so on. And we felt that uh, the placement of a marketing specialist uh, would be important. Uh, we understand that uh, Dolph has a half-time person now uh, that will deal with the marketing, but it's uh, centered only on golf. Um, we did not know that golf had, would have their own at the time we did this. However, um, we feel that a marketing specialist for all of the amenities would be important. Um, we would uh, 
probably look into the, uh, expand the role of the executive council and have them serve as a unified voice for amenities. We, we do not know the role necessarily of the executive council. We felt there should be someone responsible for those things and without adding uh, additional personnel or uh, more committees, we felt if the role of that committee were expanded, it might serve that purpose. Could I interject here? Go the ahead. Executive Council is uh, a group that gets together right now two times a year. It's the chairs of all of the committees. Thank you. You guys are welcome to offer anything you want to offer. <laughs> Please. This was an area that um, we spent a lot of time talking about this. Um, obviously, the fees must reflect the advantages for Ocean Pine uh, residents members. Um, we're saying the board should determine is, if golf is a members only or a public uh, facility. Um, a lot of people we talked to uh, seem to feel that there was confusion as to which it should be. Uh, and uh, maybe that a commitment to one or the other uh, might be appropriate if that's not already done. Uh, rolling memberships should be considered. Uh, in other words, um, you can uh, join an amenity at any time during the year. Um, right now, most of that is done at the time when um, you pay your annual uh, fee to Ocean Pines. Membership passes should carry forward. As an example, a pool pass uh, that you purchase, I think is good for two years. I could be wrong on that. Uh, we're saying it should be good for the, for the life of the uh, of the pass. Uh, there shouldn't be a, a date restriction on that. So how do you know if it's, if it's valid every every year the person's paid in? Well, there could be a way of determining when it's issued uh, on, on, the, on the form or something. Uh, okay. But um, it's a little, uh, we had folks that uh, didn't want to join the pool but they had family coming down, so they wanted some passes, so they bought passes. So they didn't use all the passes in the, in the two years of the restriction and felt that um, they should have the opportunity. The coupon should last on. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Right. Let me interject here. One of the issues that came up uh, in the specific examples was the golf course where you bought five or six or ten rounds of golf. And for some reason, for some good reason or another, you couldn't take advantage of it, and it, and it expired. And they had these same passes at, at other places who honored them beyond the expiration date. And it was Ocean Ponds was the only place that did not. And we felt that with a little leeway there, that uh, you don't turn off these kind these people that get better customer service somewhere else other than Ocean Pond. So that that's who we were we we're going at. We're not saying buy a two-year pass and, and use it for life. Uh, number five, I happen to be a paddleball player, uh, so uh, I, uh, I don't think I was responsible for this, <laughs> but I'm not sure. But paddleball is the only amenity right now that does not have a committee uh, that reports or, or uh, uh, communicates directly with the board and was felt that paddleball should have uh, an advisory committee. Uh, we, uh, a great uh, give and take was uh, uh, concerning the uh, cause and effect relationship. Uh, when a change is made, what effect uh, would that have on the membership and on the uh, income from the amenity? And um, we felt that there should be more review of that cause and effect relationship. Um, and that it should be communicated um, to uh, to all residents in Ocean Pines, not just the people in the amenity. And of course, number seven is pretty self-explanatory. Um, 
We had a lot of comments about that, as a matter of fact. A, a lot of comments for all the amenities. Um, that uh, customer service is a, is, is a big, big factor. <coughs> and uh, it can help. And, and it's not the responsibility of any one group or any one person, but uh, there has to be attention devoted to that issue, and hopefully there can be some improvement. Um, I, I think you can read uh, that statement, and I think it's pretty self-explanatory, but we would react to any questions you might have. We felt the very worst thing that could happen is for the amenities to not be kept updated. We felt it very important that uh, the amenities be kept updated, that they were attractive. Um, the demographics will undergo change uh, in the community. Uh, obviously, the uh, economy will change. Uh, the popularity of certain amenities will change. And through all of that, um, the worst thing to do would be let an amenity slide and uh, not maintain its uh, attractiveness. And that it would have impact on the whole community, not, not just that individual amenity. So that pretty much was our uh, formal report. Thank you. Uh, Barbara, have you got anything you want to add to that? Um, I would just like to say that we did spend a considerable amount of time looking at the uh, statistical data with regards to ebb and flow of memberships. And, you know, there were areas where we could pinpoint certain things we thought that um, contributed to a membership's decline. Um, two in particular came to mind, the walking via the golf course and the roof on the swimming pool. And the, the statistics show that after those two things occurred, there was a decline. So, it, you know, and we got a lot of comments, uh, most of the comments, most of the input that we got from people was with regards to those kinds of issues. Um, so. Bill? I think the thing that really puzzled us and, and gave us the, the biggest challenge was we tried to look at the demographics of those things. And we saw that the community is aging. We did those statistics a few years ago from that. And the amenities are kind of geared toward the younger people in the community. So you have two opposing forces kind of working against each other. And we took a long-term view of that. We said there's going to be ups and downs. Years ago, there were lots of members of the golf course, and, and now there's not as many members. And we felt that Ocean Pines really needs to invest in the future. You really need to maintain these amenities, because eventually the, the population is going to be younger. And it, it's tough, because uh, the older population is more affected by increases in, in cost of the amenities. We said that was a real challenge, uh, but we felt that well, we came to Ocean Pines, and we think a lot of people that came to Ocean Pines, they came to Ocean Pines, Ocean Pines with all the amenities attached to it. And that's what the realtors told us, that's what we expected. And it, uh, it seems we need to ride through a rough period of time to do this. And uh, we thought that was a big challenge, uh, trying, to, trying to level that out. So I uh, just want to make that clear that we spent an awful lot of time on that. And uh, we said there's really no simple answer. I mean, if it's something that you make a choice, you can keep the amenities, or you're not. And uh, we felt that uh, Ocean Pines is Ocean Pines with all the amenities. Uh, from what I see in your report, uh, I see what you're asking us to do is, is get together and through talking to everybody in the, the executive council, you, other people, come up with a written policy, you know, what we, is that, which we don't have now. Is that right? I think that is what we are saying. Okay. When you talk about marketing, can you define a little bit more? I mean, I, I, I'm asking this for a reason, but could you define a little bit more what you mean by marketing? Well, um, uh, of course, we can define marketing in many ways, right? and I understand what you're saying. I think what we are thinking is that if, in fact, we are to increase membership um, in the various amenities, it would behoove us to 
quote, market, explain, educate the community as to the advantages of that amenity to them as an individual, but also the advantages of that amenity to them as a member of a community of Ocean Pines. And we don't think much of that is done. So we didn't feel that that would happen unless there would be a marketing person employed specifically to do that. And with the people that we talk to, and the other folks can comment as they uh, choose, with the folks that we talk to, um, uh, we, we didn't have any disagreement with that. And that that was, uh, felt pretty, uh, pretty strong across the board. Because you all can weigh in, but what I see marketing, see when people talk about marketing, many people talk about advertising. And to me, it's a, there's a huge, huge difference between marketing and advertising and, and, and putting, putting things in newspapers and putting them on the website, things like that. When, when I go in, if, I, if I'm a member, of the association, I go to pay my dues, for example. I pay my dues, but there's, would you like to join any memberships? You know, that type of thing, yes, no, whatever. S someone needs to sell. To me, it's a selling side of marketing that I think we really are missing the boat on, okay? And we can talk about that forever, but I mean, to me, it, it's a whole different half of that. Marty, you know what I'm talking about, right? And we don't, we don't seem to do that. But that's why I can see it, uh, the advantage of having a marketing and salesperson who would, well, uh, who would part follow of, up on all that. Part of our thinking also was that that individual could work with the current staff, could work with the current advisory committees, uh, help them to understand uh, how they can better uh, uh, make their amenity uh, useful. Uh, how they can attract people. Um, some of our worst enemies are the people who are members of the individual amenities. Uh, and uh, I don't know that you can really do a whole lot about that, but uh, uh, some of the comments that we heard um, were, uh, I mean, you had to actually shudder, you know, that, that an employee of Ocean Pines could tell somebody that or do, do something like that. So, um, and, and, and in some cases, it's probably the member's fault. Uh, but you still don't treat people like that, um, even if it is their fault. You try to find a way to, to get them to change, but do it in a manner that, uh, um, you know, isn't going to be offensive or uh, that kind of thing. We don't, if I might say, we also wanted to, to expand the scope of this marketing person. For example, for a golf to see if you can get a reciprocal agreement with some other golf courses in the area so we could exchange members and possibly bring more people in to play our courses and see how it is and, and increase our membership. Uh, also look at the, uh, the operations to say, are they customer focused, are they customer friendly? To recommend things to do there, to make people happy. If people are happy doing something, they'll participate in the amenity. And uh, we saw this parking person have a very, very broad scope. And, uh, I think they had an organizational chart, and uh, we kind of had that person pretty well at the top, where they would have some uh, some advantages to get things done. So we, we just try to expand that scope of that marketing person to really try to increase membership, increase customer service, but to go outside the box, do some things different. Okay, um, I, a number of number of questions, but first of all, I. I'd like to thank the group. Uh, obviously, on behalf of all of us, Bill has already done that. And I'd like to, tough job and something that's very rarely needed, um, I think we all realize. So I thank you for your efforts. Um, I um, want to ask a couple questions about some of the things that's been mentioned in, in the presentation, also with Phil. First of all, I agree with uh, the customer service comment, I think, is something that we uh, on the board feel strongly about, too and have made that one of our priorities and objectives for this year is improving the customer service uh, within Ocean Pines. And certainly the, the amenities is where the rubber meets the road, so to speak, in a, a number of cases, interfacing with the public. 
um, agree also wholeheartedly with the maintaining of those facilities and it being part of our quality of life, to be sure. Um, some of the demographics, I, I'm, I'm wondering, uh, and Phil, I think you made the statement that it was difficult to try and uh, balance because we, you, you mentioned that we have an aging population with amenities, and the report states it as well, that appear uh, to be more attractive to the younger than to the older, but um, I, I don't necessarily agree with that. Um, there are a number of communities across this country, um, villages comes to mind, I've never been to the villages, but I know many of the people have. Um, Sun City, Arizona, there are lots and lots of places that focus golf or golf and tennis and swimming uh, as an attractive element for people to relocate and to retire there. So I'm a little puzzled by the concept that we have amenities that, um, and it's right here in the report in your findings, it's a key finding, I think, an aging population with amenities that generally, yeah, here it is, with amenities that appear appeal for the most part to a younger generation. Um, I, for one, don't feel that way, and wonder what you might have had in your research and demographics to support that. Can I put one of the things we looked at was how many people in the winter time are going to the villages and not sticking around ocean pines. We think that affects memberships of some of the items, of some of the amenities. They're just not here. We see the, we see the memberships dropping off. They keep on decreasing. And uh, you know, we use, uh, we, we raise the fees here, we have a walking fee, but no one's ever reached conclusive proof that that's what's doing it. And, and we think as you get older, the financial aspects are difficult to join the golf club, to join the marina, to join tennis. So we think the financial impact on senior citizens, or, or I would say senior citizens, on the older population is more of an impact than the younger population coming in. So uh, do we have uh, empirical proof that that happened? No, we will not. It was uh, one of the things that we looked at and we felt that this, this was probably a final. Just to follow up to that, and then uh, uh, Steve. Uh, but I'd like to stick to this subject, if you, I, if you would, you know what I mean, so we can. On this subject, yeah. on this subject, follow up. Did you do any uh, analysis uh, or correlation between the fall off uh, in, in revenue versus the fall off in memberships? And I asked that specifically with uh, some knowledge in mind about golf. There's been a tremendous decline over time in the golf memberships per se, not nearly as much as the fall off, fall off in golf revenue. In fact, uh, if you go back over a period of several years, you'll find that uh, in years where golf membership has declined, revenue has actually increased for the golf course. And I'm wondering if you did any looking at that kind of data as well, or just the membership data. Um, we, we, what we did is, I think we brought in the director of golf. Uh, I wasn't at that meeting, but I read the report. And one of the uh, issues that came out were tee times. Mm -hmm. and, uh, we actually went to look at the tee times. And we saw that tee times are booked for members that leave very little opportunity for non-members to play on the golf course. Mm -hmm. Supposedly that's been corrected. So we didn't know whether that shortfall in revenue was because of the increase in outside play or the decrease in outside play. We, we didn't have that, that statistical information. Phil, I, I, what I'm suggesting though is you said a shortfall in revenue. We have years in the last five where revenues are up for golf while memberships are down. In other words, you don't have to be a member to play, and so while you have a decline in the membership category of revenue, if you have increased play among residents of Ocean Pines or others who are not, quote, golfing members, you still have increased revenue even though your membership members are down. So I think what, I, what I'm hearing you say is, and I don't dispute, you know, we, we have needs here, I understand that, I'm, I'm not disputing that. All I'll be asking is about the correlation, and it sounds like you didn't really look at the correlation between the actual revenues versus the memberships. Okay. Thanks. Yeah, I'd just like to go to back to Pete's uh, point about demographics and uh, because, I mean, that's something that hit me and it just hit me. I said, that, that's not quite right. And perhaps it's the way it's expressed. It's just right. not right. Um, if you look at the clubs, uh, golf, uh, which I'm a member of, and I'm pretty sure I've heard that it's true of tennis, and I believe you can make a case they're being used, the, the number, the age of the members who are using those is going up. I mean, golf is basically, you know, an over 55 sport at Ocean Pines. 
if you look at just the members that are in, I believe tennis is probably the same way. I've heard that so generally you're talking about people over 60. And I believe that if you look at a lot of the swimming functions, they're oriented, swimming women and so forth, are oriented towards health-minded senior citizens. On the other hand, I don't believe that you carry that over to the overall demographics of Ocean Pines. I think the problem is that the Ocean Pines demographics are swinging to the younger. I agree. And, and I believe Zogby supports that, and I know what supports it is our skateboard park, where beyond our wildest expectations, over 800 kids showed up with their parents in tow to sign up. Our family fun nights, which, which packed the pool on a regular basis. And my wife just told me, uh, she's over part of the Friends of the Library group, that the head librarian over there was discussing a program for uh, young mothers to bring in their, everything from their little babies in arms to, I think, I don't know what, the, outside, but several years old. And 50 showed up <laughs> at, at this meeting. And I, I guess, you know, the, the issue in my mind is that what can we do to address that real population of Ocean Park? And by the way, they don't necessarily, or they're not necessarily a country club generation. I mean, they're out working, they have kids they got to put through school, they don't have the discretion, discretionary money. It's not the fixed income people I worry about, it's, it's them. Well, the reason I ask this marketing question is, is because uh, it's what we tried to do in tennis, and we only are just starting the heat spot to swell. But if you look at who's actually using the membership of golf, and you knew the age of the people, and every name of all 275 fam member family memberships, okay, and you can see what you got, okay, but if we want to get the younger group, and we know when the course is not being used, the marketing person come up, come up with a package that would, that would offer a tremendous deal to the 30, 40 year olds who are working all day, but when they come, you know, on the weekends or the afternoons, maybe they would play. I'm not trying, we can't solve this now, but what I'm talking about is this whole marketing program, which we need to think out of the box to get moving here. I think another uh, concern we had as we went through uh, the various interviews is when we're, what, at what period of time are people talking about? You know, are they talking about last year? Are they talking, and we found that many people talked about 10 years ago. Well, you know, 10 years ago. <laughs> yeah. You know, know 10 years ago, we were all 10 years younger. Yeah. You know, I, I, my favorite is I went over there, you know, and they treated me like dirt. I mean, I got, I'll never go back. How long ago was that? Four years ago. <laughs> oh, <laughs> well, um, but, well, maybe. But I, I think the point is that uh, some of this is paid. And uh, I think, personally, I think that uh, the board is much more cognizant uh, of this issue than they were four years ago. Right? However, I don't think a lot of things that have been implemented have been in operation long enough to make judgments as to whether they're successful or not successful. Well, that's important. Right. Important is that we haven't addressed Bob. that we should. Bob? I just have a couple questions for you. Um, and, and I appreciate the presentation, by the way. Demographics is obviously is a hot issue, and it's one of the ones I wrote down after reading the report and then hearing it again today. Um, you mentioned, uh, Bill, right? Oh. And you had mentioned statistics from two years ago, but I didn't hear where you pulled that information. What was that report? Zogby. Zogby. Thank you. And, and the indication we got there that between a, a certain age group, there was a, quite a bit, a large percentage of Ocean Pines residents in that age group. Our feeling was they're much more impacted financially in paying for these amenities. Plus, I think we made an assumption that more and more of these people in the winter time go to the villages, go to Florida, which kind of increases uh, the use of the These are the financially impacted people. <laughs> right, two residents of <laughs> Florida, residents, but you know. go to Florida in the winter. I mean, it, it's the average, it's the average young horse and working person right. in Ocean Pines, what they you do. You can make a comment, but the comment is that you spend the money on playing golf, you spend the money to go to Florida. So that's a decision, and maybe somebody would rather be warned than play golf in the winter time. 
Yeah. Yeah. Really that's more that. that's like, I think we'll defer on that. The, and the other two we'll questions I had were about the presentation. Uh, on one of your slides, <laughs> a policy and procedure to balance special interest groups with the entire community. And that was on slide five. But I, I didn't quite understand what you meant when you said that. I'd ask them, but we're told to wait till the end, so I waited. Which which uh, issue are we doing with here? Slide five. Uh, that's slide five. <laughs> that that's not the uh, proper impact of special interest groups. Impact of special interest groups, and then you went on to say in comparison to the entire community. But I I, I made a note of that because I wasn't sure what you meant specifically. Well, I think there are people who feel that. Um, Each individual amenity has an advisor. Now, those people are going to, there's a self-interest there, obviously, right? Uh, and um, where, where is the controlling influence? Where is the overall um, judgment being made as to whether this, if they do that in this amenity, what impact might it have someplace else? Um, that was one of the factors that we were talking about, the special interest groups. Um, you, you had individual people, uh, individual uh, residents, individual um, people that contributed to our report who felt that uh, one humanity was more important than another, uh, depending on who was in charge at the time, depending who uh, was on the board at the time, uh, depending who was a member at the time, right? And that those groups, I, I guess the uh, cliche would be the squeaky wheel gets the oil, right? And should it be that way, right? Uh, can, we, can, can we make that less a factor? Uh, because I think uh, unquestionably it is a factor. Uh, you're going to have personalities, strong personalities affiliated with the specific amenity, and they're going to push the amenity. They're going to do the things they have to do to get members, right? But um, do we then begin to offer that amenity more um, special uh, feelings or special uh, monies or whatever because of that influence, right? So I think uh, we have to understand that that there has to be a balancing of all of these interests. Uh, and, and where is that balance? And was there a recommendation? For was there, yes. where's the, was that the market? The board board comes no, to no, mind. No. Uh, yeah, it does. <laughs> the, um, and I'd like to add a little bit to what Dick said. Um, clearly, the cover of the swimming pool is an issue in which there's a strong sentiment in the community that there was a special interest group that pushed it through fast and hard. And that came through in the comments. The recommendation with regards to the executive council is designed to temper that strong imposition of a particular special interest group by ensuring that, for example, if I'm, in, if I'm a swimming pool advocate, and I want to put a roof on the swimming pool, then before I can go forward with something like that, then I'm going to have to sit down with those members of the Executive Council that have responsibility for other amenities. Because there's going to be an impact, conceivably, on other amenities by virtue of what is spent on particular amenities. Okay, we've got a lot of shaking heads here. <laughs> <laughs> yes, um, I, I thank you for clarifying that. Um, Wait, now I, did, did I clarify? Well, there, there's one, one well, yeah, you, you clarified it for me by bringing up the swimming pool mm -hmm. cover, okay? Um, there's one other issue that maybe we should be aware of. We felt that the advisory committees report directly to the board of directors. They represent those interest groups for amenity. You have the general manager and the people that run those amenities that create policies and procedures. So we think he created a natural problem there. You have people with special interest groups dealing directly with the board on functions that are the responsibility of someone else. So the general manager makes a policy, 
the special interest groups advisory council go right to the board and we think that that creates some issues in determining uh, consistency in running the amendments. <coughs> Well, that's well, not how it works. <laughs> that's not how it works. <laughs> Excuse me. Yeah. In fact, it's the, poli it's the board who makes policy in right. all cases. Mm -hmm. Right. The general manager does not. Right. So but that they're, argument is they're not. They're in charge of running the amenities, are they not? They're in charge of day to day operations. Should they, they determine costs for the amenities? No. Customer service for the amenities? No. Operations for the amenities? No. Who are we talking about? General manager. General manager. Yeah. The answer is yes. They yeah. run operations. That's yeah. management. And you have an advisory committee <clears throat> dealing directly with the board of directors on policies. Any any interest that they have in this particular amenities in terms of cost, in terms of improvements. They, is that but in, pra in right. practice, they work with the staff very closely. Every advisory oh. committee does. Every one. We me. all have. You know, yeah, I'm well, just, just saying in the organizational structure. That's what we looked at, and that's the reporting line that we saw. Maybe it happened some other way, but if you look at the organizational structure, that's what it says. Let me try and respond to that, and uh, I hope others will as well. Um, I'm a new board member, but I've been involved in the Budget and Finance Committee operation for uh, a year and a half uh, now. And uh, I don't think, Phil, you're describing how it really works. Um, I first of all, I that was the organization. Okay. That's all we had. First of all, the general manager is our CEO, uh, and, and he represents management and is responsible for all the management employees, including the operations of all the amenities. We are the board and we set the policy. The general manager is accountable to us. We have advisory committees, and thank God for them, because they do a great job, and uh, they advise, and certainly they're, if they're involved in tennis, they have an interest in tennis. If they're involved in golf, they have an interest in golf. So it's as you would expect. They are at... Marty. I'm so sorry. They are advocating for their particular amenity, uh, which is as it should be. Now, in terms of the setting of the fees and the, and the costs and all that sort of stuff, there's an annual budget cycle that is undertaken under the direction of the general manager. Um, again, department heads responsible for those amenities report to the general manager. It bubbles up, uh, it goes to the budget and finance committee long before it reaches the board in terms of an annual budget process. There's interaction between that particular committee and each of the department heads who report to the GM. They go through that process. We'll do it again here in about a month and a half. Uh, getting the input, they'll question fees, they'll question assumptions about membership, et cetera, et cetera. Expenditures. Expenditures, all of that. It then comes to the board and uh, we then debate that and ultimately produce a budget which includes fees for the various amenities, includes the costs, uh, the anticipated revenues. So, what the, I'm hearing is... Mayor, uh, may I interject? Go ahead, please. During please. that process, too, this year at least, the individual committee associated with the amenity has also been invited to have an in, uh, input in the budget and finance uh, process. Yes. So... It, 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 it's fine. Let me, let me give it. So, it sounds like there's deep-seated suspicions that ultimately go back to the pool cover, frankly. No, 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 no. It, no, it, no, no, it's no, no, no. I'm just telling you what it sounds like to me. No, that was an Okay, example. okay. Well, I'm glad to hear that. Well, let's use there should be. There should be. Let's use that as an example. We have a pool cover. Did that pool cover go through this process? No. That pool cover was Wait. Wait. slam dunk through the board. The answer, the answer to the question is, as I understand it, it wasn't part of it, I'm not sure anybody here was. That wasn't that, a budget. I that was, was there. That was approved by the board. The night it happened. Right. We're accountable to the folks who elected us. I mean, I don't know what better governance you want. No, no, no. I, I'm just going through the thing that you just said. Yeah. We had this tremendous process for budget. We right. budget this, we do this. Right. It was, was completely the budgeted? It was completely ignored. Well, what, what, what he's saying is, is that if there's there could be too much influence of a particular board member or a group of board members mm -hmm. to do something for a That's special right. interest group, and, and and you're that's just an example, the the best example of the worst thing that was done because it was not going through the process. Okay, and the solution is to bypass the board. No, no, no. 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 Okay, because I have not the seen board, that. No, the, the board, board solution is the board. The solution is to is to listen 
to she what she's saying here is listen to all the advice. Okay, it's right okay. there. Listen Impact to the general manager. I mean, the general manager recommended against it, I believe. Right there. You were the finance committee. You wasn't here. Wrote a letter he wasn't here. Opposed to the finance opposed to it. Okay. So okay. we just screwed that up. So we the bells were ringing. That was the board decision. Right there. Right there. Marty, Impact Special Marty, you have to keep wanting to say something. I said it. That everything he just said was totally ignored. In the swimming pool fiasco, it was. It was but impact of special interest groups. Okay, but what I think we're doing now is trying to follow a normal procedure. Agreed. Better. Do it better. We are in fact convening the executive council twice a year. We have received their reports. The reports have all been in. They've all been looked at, and they've been passed out to the board and the general manager. The general manager has given them to his staff, and the staff will review them, and every recommendation of that council will be considered in the budget process, right? Everyone, and we will respond to everyone with also. But so that, that is a step in the right direction, but it doesn't mean it's gonna solve our problem, you know? Now you, you had asked a question initially uh, about, did we, uh, did that screen just go off? Of the time is it's sorry, it's time you're, you're, okay. you're okay. You're okay. You can get it back. <laughs> I can. Hit the space no, no. There you go. Well, as I said, it's not my technology is not my strength. <laughs> but, uh, you asked a question about the uh, uh, special interest. Special interest. That have you has that been answered? It, it has. Thank you. Okay. And, you and, have one more question. And, I do have one. Go ahead. Go ahead. No. Okay. Because it ties in. And I think you've answered my question too that I had on pricing because this discussion we just had in the last few minutes, um, the pricing paragraph, which is recommendation three, establish a pricing policy to include the philosophy behind amenities, et cetera, et cetera. And then it says the applicable advisory committee in collaboration will formulate pricing policies with the appropriate OPA managers and the marketing professional. All pricing will com be completed in time, sufficient time for inclusion in the annual budget cycle. At that point in time, it sounds to me like the board and the, elect, the elected representatives uh, do not really have a role, but I think I hear it differently now. That's a part of a process, right? Right, right. Okay, so then, then it goes into the normal process. So you're looking at additional front-end input into the whole process. You're not talking about a different process, I, right? I think, no. I, I'm fine with that. I think um, how we communicate these things is, is a challenge. Uh, these issues, right? We have that problem I'm too. I'm sure it's an issue for the board yes, the it community, is. right? Yeah. And uh, no matter what you do, there probably is need for interaction to clarify and understand certain things, right? Yeah. It's very difficult for the board to communicate with 10,000 people, right? <laughs> but somehow, um, to use a cliche, um, is it not important for people in the community, amenity users or not, to understand the process? And is there, have we made an effort to communicate the process? Um, our opinion would be we need to do more in that area. Let me respond to that. Thank you, and you're right. I, I agree with that, and I can tell you this, that we, both as a board and speaking on behalf of the Budget and Finance Committee, that I used to be part of and now I'm currently liaison, have a plan underway to do exactly that. Um, the need for additional communication, particularly in the financial area and the budget process, has been addressed. There's going to be a series of articles uh, authored by the chair, by, by the committee itself, Budget and Finance Committee, dealing with such things as budget process, amenities, et cetera, in, in our quarterly publication. So that plan has already been put into place. If you all read the communication last time, it spoke about in each of the succeeding issues, your quarterly issues, you're gonna find that kind of information exactly for the purpose that you just described it, to, to help facilitate the communication to the broad membership. So you'll be seeing subjects uh, over the next year and hopefully beyond that uh, addressing that so that more people can better understand uh, how we go about things. One quickie, I know you had, uh, but what, just one quickie here. The advisory, can, the, I'm sorry, the uh, um, executive council. There may be some confusion about what that group is or has been, but 
It is, as Barbara, I think, said, it's the committee chairs, all the committees of Ocean Ponds. And how many are there now? 15, 16, 13. 13. Okay. 13 committee chairs, hopefully soon to be 14, um, paddleball, uh, gathered once a year, generally speaking, over the last several years, as I understand it, just to share information and be a facilitating uh, communication link. Once a year, they would get together and, and share. I think Bill Rayco is now, and maybe you did it too, Dave, maybe twice a year. Twice a year. Twice a year. But up until that time, as I would believe, it was gathered once a year, if at all. But anyway, that's simply the chairs of the committees historically having come together just to share information and communicate uh, with the president. Frankly, I attended a couple of them, uh, and uh, there were no members of the public there, uh, just the president of the board and uh, the members of the executive council. This past time, uh, several other board members, uh, Bob Thompson was there and some members of the press. So that has not been a, govern a member of our governance so much as a means of communicating uh, committee chair to committee chair as well as committee chair to a president to the board. Okay, so it has not had a functioning role in the governance of Ocean Pines. But it, I, would, I think it should. Well, that's fine. But I I'm disagree. Just, I, I disagree I think, too, I by think, the way. I, think I disagree it's too. Very much for the for the benefit of the committee chairs. Anybody who's chairing the committee, I believe, you know, they're a representative in a way of the people. They're the window uh, from the the members of the community to the board. And I believe that it's their obligation to understand the broader picture. And what these executive council meetings are specifically for is to give them that broader education they need. They need to know what other people are doing to a limited extent. Not involved with it, but to understand it. I, and just a, a follow-on comment. I agree with Dave in that respect. And, and it also allows each committee member not to just look at their silo, but to understand what they may be doing in, car, in concert with what others are doing. And that's a good vehicle to do that. That doesn't necessarily involve governance. It's communication. Uh, yeah, we, we had, uh, oh, I'm sorry. That's I, mine's relatively simple, but if you'd like to respond to that. Go ahead. Go ahead. Back to the question and answers. Uh, the other thing that I wrote down, treat all entities as a single composite, is something you would say. Help me understand what you meant by that, please. Well, there seems to be a lot of discussion that one amenity costs more money than another amenity. Um, um, the uh, people get a better break if they join one amenity than another amenity. I happen to have a history of education. And I've worked in uh, various uh, districts. And um, in any district I ever worked, the football program sponsored every other athletic program. Is that wrong or is that right? I don't know. It's a fact that I'm wearing it. And um, as a result, um, I'm sure there are some Title IX people in the room here. Uh, a lot of things in Title IX would not have occurred had it not been for the football program, right? But um, we do not, we did not feel as a committee that it was important to um, compare one amenity to another. That for financial purposes, it should be all one uh, ball of wax, and uh, uh, maybe there should be some uh, some gold uh, 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 statements. Maybe uh, maybe a, a statement might be that uh, all of those amenities combined will break even. Right. Well, if they don't break even, then maybe there should things that should be done. But if they're not all considered together, how are you going to do that, I think, is basically what we were saying. So at any one time, we previously said one amenity may be more popular than another for whatever reason. Um, but in the long term, history of the amenities, we feel it would be better to consider them as one um, composite for financial purposes. So we wouldn't break down? Uh, you know, no, 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 I think you would need to continue to do that, right? Wow. And I think the responsibility of each individual amenity to be um, managed in a business-like manner would be important. Um, and I think the responsibility of the advisory committee for that amenity or uh, whoever, whoever else assumes that role um, 
would be important. Um, but I think for the financial purposes, for budget purposes, um, I, I don't see how it's advantageous, nor did the committee did not see how it was advantageous um, to break it out uh, and have one competing against another. We thought that was self-defeating. I'll make a comment on that also. Yeah. All we wanted to try to avoid is the finger pointing between the amenity members at the marina pays for golf and the beach club pays for everything else. We thought that that creates an issue between members and we think people need to be happy <coughs> to join an amenity. And, and that was the philosophy that Ocean Pines is all this and the amenities. Look at it as a whole, treat it as a whole, but you need to run each as an individual business for, for practical reasons. I think Columbia does that. They're the largest homeowner association in the state, and I believe they do it exactly that way. Yeah, and, and we, we, we're looking at some of the amenity members that say, you know, our fees are paying for this. Our fees should be based on the value of the product that they're getting. And I think that's how you price things. If it costs X outside of Ocean Pines, or it costs X minus some percentage to be in Ocean Pines, but you are not subsidizing other, any other amenity. So the philosophical difference is, put them under one umbrella, have a bottom line, you still have little business units, but you have a bottom line that has the total. And if my memory serves me right, that total is probably not far off in terms of revenue versus deficit. Thank you. Um, Dick, your response to, to I think your, your answer is to the question of Bob, that you would advocate for no longer reporting in our public reports if I'm hearing you correctly, individual results for individual amenities. Is that correct? I think it should be a factor. <laughs> wait, 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 you either do or you no, don't. We did, not, <laughs> do. we did not get to that point in our discussion. Oh, you didn't? We did not. Uh, it's still a business unit, so you need to report yeah. Yeah, I think, I think okay, you know, okay, 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 okay. I, I, I get it, I get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's no, fine. I, in other words, and again, I don't want to go into this in too much detail, but beach parking does generate a lot of revenue mm -hmm. and it could hide a lot of ills if the other ones weren't managed properly. Mm -hmm. right. right. Right? So <laughs> I think you need an umbrella thing, but you need to break yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. I, we, we could I, have I, become I, very specific I, in, in what we, in this report. So you pull up short of making that specific recommendation. Right. That's right, fine. Right. Let me just comment upon the overall philosophy. I agree with you 100% as one member that uh, focusing on the whole package of amenities, and I don't know how many of you attended the annual meeting uh, here past August, but there was one of our members who spoke to, to make some comments, his name is Tom Terry, and he's now a member of the Budget and Finance Committee, and he spoke to this very issue about the amenities being viewed as an entire package and not finger pointing and saying, well, I don't use this one and therefore you shouldn't pay me and this one's losing that, and I think that's what you're addressing, that whole concept, right? And I think he put it much more eloquently than I ever could, but what he said was the entire package of amenities it was, is what makes Ocean Pines great. This is Tom Terry, not Pete Gobstack. Tom Terry saying this. And we need to continue to, to promote that concept that it all works together and you can't single this one out or that one out. You need to look at the entire package of amenities, whether you use them or not, whether you choose to or are capable of. And I think that's the concept that you're trying to promote as I understand it. And I, is that right? Barbara shaking her head yes. So, uh, okay. Marty. Thank you. Jean, Jean may have I had know, a couple. I'm not going to answer Jean now. I'm going to let him wait for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> so I got you, Jean. Go ahead, go ahead Marty. Uh, I only had w w really one question. On the policy, I think it's all good, A through E, but A, I have a problem with, and let me tell you why. It ties the board's hands a bit when you say we will not sell or contract out an amenity. Now forget the sell part, I don't think that's in the history or the cards, but one of the best years one of our amenities ever had was the year that we, we contracted it out. Uh, why would we Why would we say that, <laughs> you know, that we want to run it in a business-like manner, we want a strong customer service, we, we don't want an increase in assessments, but we won't lease it out. I, I just don't think that's a... a to, to me, if leasing it out meets the other criteria, then bye bye. Yeah, I, I, under, I understand what you're saying. And uh, I don't have a direct answer, maybe one of these folks does, but 
my general comment would be that if I were dissatisfied with an amenity, I would tell that amenity that I was dissatisfied, and I would set some objectives for that amenity. And one of the objectives might be, you have four years. If you don't turn it around, somebody else will do it. Uh, you can't make it that long. The, board, well, the, whenever, board's, the whenever, board's memory isn't four years whenever long. Whatever the <laughs> term, the concept, though, is in order to do that, you have to have an ongoing annual evaluation process. Of Which is in here. It, it's in here, and I think it's great. At current, we don't see, and we're recommending that. So those kind of tie together. Maybe you can say to... Uh, an amenity uh, the board or whoever is responsible that uh, you know we're not happy uh, and this is why we're not happy right now here are some suggestions you can do to, to turn some things around but if you can't do that or if we can't help you do that then maybe we have to look elsewhere for management I don't, I don't know that we so have real strong feelings of not outsourcing one of the things we brought up was tennis tennis is outsourced and it's very successful. I think our philosophy was don't get rid of something that you can't get back. Okay, I, I would agree that. Right. Right. I, I think, think at the time that, that, okay. that we were discussing that, that there that. was discussion, way of saying but not this. decision <laughs> on what was going to happen to the beach property uh, and the arrangement with uh, Secrets. And uh, I, I think that was a factor in. I got it. In, in, in <laughs> All right. What I'd like to do, without objection, is uh, department rules and open it up to the to the, to the members who are here. Uh, I'm going to start with Gene, because Gene's had his hand up for so long, he's probably getting tired of broken. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. 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 Right. Who are you? For most of my reading. I am Gene Ringsdorf. Still? Two carriage okay. It's nice to see you back, Gene, by the way, if I may come. <laughs> um, I appreciate the report that the committee put forth. I had a couple of thoughts I just wanted to add. These were probably more strategic or policy in nature. Uh, the way I look at amenities, there's two types. There's the types that are 100% supported by um, property owners, uh, and there is a user fee or what some people call business amenities. Well, what's the definition of a business amenity? I tried to separate the two. Uh, to me, our business amenities are special purpose or special use recreational facilities operated and maintained primarily for adult users. Whereas the 100% subsidized amenities are recreational facilities, generally multi-purpose, that are operated and maintained primarily for users of all ages. And why is that significant to me? I think that the uh, business amenities ought to be uh, user fee supported. And using that definition, I also believe that the parking lot at the boat ramp at White Horse Park is no different than the parking lot at the beach. You're giving people access to the boat ramp, you're giving act people back access to the beach. There should be user fees charged for that in some way, whether you put tags on or whatever. The Finance Committee recommended this uh, eight years ago to the board, and, and nothing has occurred. I know this board is looking for new revenue generation, I believe. That if by my definition, the boat ramp would fall as a, an amenity that should be a user fee. Um, as far as policies, strategic policies, uh, I heard in the report, and maybe I heard it wrong, that to, to set a cost, you look at the uh, maintenance and operation costs and divide it by the expected number of members to start setting the fee. Exactly. I believe a user fee amenity the only policy that makes any sense, in my opinion, is to maximize the profit or minimize the losses. That's the only po <laughs> policy that makes, effect, uh, makes sense across all, all amenities. To say otherwise means that you're going to have people subsidize and you always have the rights. But if you're maximizing the profits, and that means you charge whatever the market will bear until your revenues are, are starting to affect it, then I think that's the policy that should be in effect for all user uh, user related user fee were driven amenities. Um, secondly, we have always had an unstated policy that the capital improvements to all amenities are supported by all property owners, 
and that is the foundation for maybe giving some the property owner members a little break on fees because they're already supporting the capital cost. I think that's a policy. If it's not written, it should be written in there for financial purposes. Finally, with respect to amenities that are losing money, I feel like that the, the last item I have in here is maybe a, a, a consideration that should be made with respect to substantial losses incurred over a, a number of years. And I left the number of years blank, but maybe a five or six year, or seven year period. If you have continuous substantial losses in an amenity where you're charging user fees, you're going to have problems with the community supporting that other than the people that are members. I think what you should do then is set a policy that if a user fee, if a user fee amenity is continuously loses for X number of fiscal years, continuous without a profit or without, without a profit, then whatever that X number of years is, let's say it's five years, then you say, okay, I'm going to take some steps here. In the next year, I will lease that out to an independent third party operator. Because obviously Ocean Pines itself cannot operate and maintain it for a profit. So give it a chance to be done by a third party. Okay? This is after a five year period. And the reason that we're six years, whatever you decide, I don't want to go year by year because I don't think it's fair, because I don't think it's fair. You gotta let all the stakeholders know. The stakeholders are the property owners, the members, the outside members, the community at large, the people that want to use, this, use these amenities. Once all these people know, well, okay, I got a five year period to get this to be profitable, I think you'll see a change, or a six year, or whatever you say, I think that something will change as far as how you approach the situ situation. If you can't get a, um, oh, if you get a third party operator, the lease should cover the annual capital carrying costs that the property owners normally would have to pay. Okay, the, the owner operator will have to, that's what your lease fee should be. Uh, absent finding a suitable third party operator, okay, now this is after a period of years that you had substantial losses with a user fee amenity and you can't find an owner operator who thinks they can do it profitably then I think a referendum should be sent out to property owners uh, with to vote on reasonable alternative proposals for the disposition of that amenity, which includes possible conversion to an alternative use and or outright sale to someone else with restrictions as to appropriate future uses so as to maintain uh, and enhance, maintain and enhance the economic and quality of life values for the surrounding property owners and our association members. In other words, you wouldn't want to sell them. And let's say for the uh, golf course to a uh, strip club, that that might not work. Well, it might work for some, but it might not work for others. But, uh, that's, that's generally, these are what I, 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 but I did hear in a presentation where I thought I heard that you take the cost and divide it by the expected number of members to set the fees. I think Excuse me, I, I offered that as a, okay. Okay. I'm not in the written report. Okay. I offered that as an explanation. Okay. Yeah, that, that, that would just get us break even. If we adopt that, then we're going to be paying more assessments. Those user fee amenities should generate enough net and the benefit then is assessments are lower for all property owners who are paying the capital cost on all amenities. That's the one on this way policy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Gene. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, um, my name is Bruce Quay. I, I live in Point. Um, in the, in the um, report, the, the stated goal, I guess, is to, for the ad hoc committee to review and make recommendations regarding policy and fees. Yet, the first thing that was stated was that, that, that fees weren't addressed. And I, I sort of find it counterintuitive that you would attempt to come up with policy or recommended policy or whatever without any kind of uh, weighing of the fees and their impact, their success, um, some kind of metrics whereby you marry the, the, the cost and the fees with any kind of uh, amenity policy. Um, 
for instance, they, 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 one of the statements in here is the number one priority is customer service. That might not be, that might not be the most important uh, priority if fees and costs were considered. As far as lumping all the amenities under one umbrella, I think that's, I, I, again, I think that's counterintuitive too. I think people want to see uh, detailed analysis of the amenities, what they're paying for, their success, their participation. Uh, Tom Perry's a good friend of mine, he lives next door to me. There's a lot of people that don't agree though with that concept that all amenities should just be lumped together and, and treated as one. Feedback? Fees? Well, I think I think maybe uh, it should be worded individual fees. I think um, we probably uh, might, uh, in retrospect, it might be better to say finances rather than fees, right? Uh, if I may address this fee issue, uh, a little history here as I see it, okay? Uh, maybe when we first formed you all, we maybe the impression was you're to come up with, let's have fees for swimming, let's have fees for this. I don't know. But understanding the situation for 19 years here, I understand how that really would be almost impossible for you to do. But I think with expanded communications and understanding of the structure and stuff, maybe we'll get some better input on this. And I'll use tennis as an example. For years and years and years, I was a member of the first tennis advisory committee. People believed in tennis that everybody was the same, no special deals, that's the way it is, okay? And that was on the tennis advisory committee. And they said the board sets the fees and that's what it's gonna be. Well, the board, the fee, really, in fact, the board seldom sets the fees. The fees are presented to the board by management in the management process, and generally speaking, except for the big items like, like uh, golf, they're ignored by the board. This is not maybe not this board, but in, in not ignored, country. accepted, accepted, <laughs> accepted by the board. And and when I said we got to change the fees, I I was slapped down, uh, saying no no no, that's not our business. Okay, so. Uh, as, as a member of a small special interest group, which I claim to be guilty of, and I also figured it was my job to enhance the tennis uh, membership, I could see it dying away, I selfishly presented, we need to make some changes in tennis. And, and I convinced the Tennis Advisory Committee that this was okay for them to recommend this. And we recommended it to management, and management said, Fine, why haven't we heard this before? Sort of, right? So what I'm saying is with better communications, we can understand it individually how we can come up with better solutions for the tennis, I mean for the uh, fee structure. You said selfishly. I just want the people to know what he means by selfishly is to promote tennis at the same time increase the revenues and participation in tennis. Not I want to selfishly. Well, 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 because we're talking about selfishly. special interest groups, there's nothing wrong with special interest groups. As a matter of fact, there it's 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 human nature and it's good advocacy. It's advocacy. And for example, I think this aquatics committee that John McLaughlin started. Uh, is a good thing because I don't think anybody was recommending fees before to the general manager. One o'clock, yeah. You know, and hopefully they'll come up with a, with a better fee structure to recommend to him to consider in the overall picture. Right. You know. But by the way, point of clarification, uh, I, I'm gonna mis when I said fees, maybe I should have said costs. All right, cost of amenities. Um, uh, costs versus usage, things like that. Uh, fees might um, might have been uh, uh, a misstatement. But, uh, but, uh, what I what I was trying to get to is I think that any time you're attempting to set policy, make decisions, and things like that, if you ignore uh, one of the most important components, in this case, cost of the amenities, I think you're heading down the wrong road. Bill Rule, may I? Yes. First off, uh, to follow up on the tennis, I think it's the only amenity that's increased membership. But not by as much as we hope. But 25 we, new members is not a bad day. People, they're younger people because we changed the structure of the, uh, of, the, of the fee structure and we also introduced something 
we get younger people to play in the afternoon. The second thing I want to say when it comes to this cost and the, and the retail end of the fees, I believe if Tom Olson and I were given an unlimited budget, we could make a pencil. Probably take us a couple days. Our costs would be just the amount of time we've spent on it. We're over what you can buy a pencil for at the dollar store. Your fees have got to be based on what you can buy it at the dollar store for, not what it costs you. A follow-up comment to that and, and also to what Bruce said. And I haven't heard it commented upon, nor do I see it in the report. Fees have to be based on market conditions in the surrounding community. We have to be cognizant of, and I know we are, of what others are charging for similar services, whether it be the food and beverage operation, the restaurant, whether it be the golf course tea times, whether it be tennis fees. We do operate in a, in a market, and we have to take that into consideration in terms of setting the fees. I absolutely agree with the concept that we, as Ocean Pines residents, ought to get a reduction of some sort from what others would be charged. But nowhere do I see acknowledged the market conditions that need to be taken and, into account. And, and we did, that was a lot of discussion was devoted to that. Probably should be in here somewhere. Well, that, but, yes, it has to be. But, but um, we also felt that the people in the best position to do that would be the advisory committees because they would be looking at the competition. And that's what that's a, that's the beauty of those advisory committees. They know that particular subject, whether it be tennis or golf or aquatics, they have a better knowledge of that than, than others of us do. So I'm that's really awesome. helpful. You could tell me that uh, I'm going to let you golf today for 10 bucks. I wouldn't know that. That's a good deal or a bit. Take it. <laughs> but, but, uh, I, I, no, that's I right. Bill Leverman was the first guy that had his hand up in the room, and, and now and I, I have not forgot that. Bill <laughs> I'm Bill Wentworth, and I live in on Trinity Place. I'm also the chairperson of the CAC, which is the Club's Advisory Committee, which is the Food and Beverage Operation. I hear two concepts here that are absolutely in conflict with one another. You're talking about Fee, based, fee pricing based on competition around and you're talking about a composite amenities concept. Two things button heads against me. This community was an amenities based community when it was established. This was established as an amenities based community. This is the only amenities based community that I'm aware of that every person who lives in the community doesn't have access to all the amenities because we do it as an individual thing. I did a study of the revenue generated on the present model that we use of the revenue generated in the 2008 amenity season. We're generating new, not this year, but past year. If, I know <coughs> Marty's going to have a coronary when I say this, <laughs> but maybe, I, maybe not. <laughs> But if we included an amenities fee as part of our assessment and everyone in the community had access to all the amenities, it would do two things. It would be, number one, it would reduce the amount of money that individuals had to pay to be part of access to an amenity. And number two, it would increase the revenue substantially that we're presently getting from what we're doing. So I think that, and there are some exceptions to my, my thoughts on this. I mean, there, there are some, some, some exceptions. I mean, you would loan everything, but maybe you might have to pay a cart fee or something to play golf, and you still have to pay the 25 bucks to have the, the, a parking pass at, at, at the beach. But basically, it, it can be done. That's the way a, amenity-based communities operate. You don't join this, you don't join that. And the amenities that we have are things that are based on lifetime participation. In the education business, as Dick was and as I was, we, in our physical education programs, we taught lifetime sports, lifetime activities. Swimming, golf, tennis, paddle ball, all those things are lifetime activities regarding your age. That's no coronary. Yeah, if I, <laughs> it's okay. If I could, and, and Bill kind of led into, I've been wanting to get into this for some time, and Bill's segues. 
You say pricing, establish a pricing policy to include the philosophy behind amenities. You know, that's a kind of broad statement that really drives me nuts because then I say, what does it mean? And, you know, if you look at a, I think, you know, one of the first things in that policy, the main philosophical question we have, is to what extent does the, should the cost of the amenities be paid out of the general assessment, and to what extent should it be paid by users? I mean, there are, I mean, for an example, some who might feel that, look, it doesn't matter, we should lower the prices, you know, it would be a concept, lower the prices and broaden the participation, even though we reduce the amount of total revenues that we gain from this, which in turn means, since costs stay constant, that you're going to take more money out of the, set, the general assessments. I mean, that's, that's a philosophy. A, a second kind of question is, if an amenity is in fact re, uh, taking in revenues which exceed the cost, is it reasonable to increase those user fees even though they're already paying well beyond what the actual cost of the amenity is? Like, like what? As long as, oh, like the yeah. beach club, like the... Beach uh, club and marina. Beach club and marina. As long, Demand, as, long as, as long as, for an example, you keep those user fees, you know, well below what market. the market is. Right. In other words, you're still getting an advantage you're being to have a deal right. uh, being here. Is that a reasonable question? And, you know, if you're talking about writing things down, those are the basic philosophical things you, you have to do because other things depend on it. The, the points that Gene made uh, depend upon the philosophy. I mean, is it okay to pay for amenities out of the general assessment when they are, in fact, accessible to all members? And that's a point. You know, all of our amenities are accessible to every member of Ocean Park. Whether Where's my buzz or slip? not. Members or residents? Res no, members, members of the Ocean Ponds Association. Residents. Did I get that right, Marty? Members. Marty we don't represent residents. For two years, he's, uh, he's pounded that in. Well, right now, the rules are if you're a resident, you get the same privilege as a member. Through that member's membership. That's right. that member's membership. But the member also has this, too. That's yeah. what, what Dave also implied but didn't say explicitly was and every member benefits from the existence of those amenities and their property values. Yes. Mm -hmm. Barbara? I think I, this discussion is demonstrative of why we believe the board should issue a policy. I mean, everything that you mentioned agree. here, if there's <laughs> philosophical differences that we're all going to have and we're going to continue to have about what an amenity means, but until you come up with something that says this is how management feels right. about an amenity. I couldn't agree with you more. But, However, we're going to get out of seven, we're going to get two people who don't agree. Sure. That, that's beside the point. But we all agree. We only need one director. The majority is going to go crazy <laughs> over certain issues. But, but quite yeah. frankly, we could do nothing, or we can come together, draft up a policy, uh, not necessarily everything you say, but draft, draft it up, discuss it, and provide the policy. You know, we complain about our amenities, but we have not faced up and written a policy for the general manager <laughs> to understand the following. We have not done that. So he's sitting here trying to manage all this stuff without any central direction, which is what you guys are recommending. And we have to do that. Yes, please. Barbara, at our initial meeting this year as a board, we established certain objectives. That was a key objective that we established, to create that overall philosophy governing the amenities. So We've embraced year. that as a board. And the year before. And this is part of This is part of that. It's part of it. It's taking we knew that the, your committee was already in existence and working, but... We clearly have acknowledged what you said, and, and it's on our goal list for this year. And what is that policy? No, 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 to, to create the policy. To create a policy. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, we have the done overriding. It. I was hoping we'd get it done uh, uh, well, we were waiting three months ago. But, yeah. to hear what you all have to say. Way. Do not agree. The fact that it's not written down doesn't mean that it doesn't exist. Exactly. Doesn't In fact, we do have well, principles yeah. that yeah, we follow. You're absolutely In right. pricing. You're absolutely right. I mean, we, we do have a, a, a general policy that the cost uh, or the user fees for an Ocean Ponds member, the member of the OPA, are going to be less than for somebody who doesn't, isn't a member of the OPA. And that's, that principle. Now, to what extent that's true, that's another issue. But we, we have that policy. We do. We right. do. 
I think we spent we uh, do. an hour and a half. Yeah. Discussing. Was it a member? Gail? Well, this gentleman wanted There's only one member. Marty could have said that. Assessment bank. I take your attention. I live in South Ocean Pines, and there seems to be a certain disconnect between what's a resident and what's a property owner. Because, you know, when you go to the Yonko or you go to the beach club or something, if you want to use the bathroom, you show your property card. Now, if you're not, and I see, that there's a tremendous number of long-term rentals in Ocean Pines that's occurred in my neighborhood, and I know of at least five or six houses on my street that are long-term rentals that have nothing to do because basically, I wouldn't say that they're poverty, but they're marginal and they're not gonna get involved in any of the amenities or anything of that nature. And we keep arguing back and forth here as to what's the property owner, what's a resident, so forth. What is the purpose of this whole argument? And that's what I'm having a hard time. There's a certain disconnect here between no, I didn't the property know. owner. No, may, may I? I don't think there is. I don't know. Are you a resident or are you a property owner? I'm a property owner and a resident. All right. I think that, but there's a smaller percentage of that than you really think. I mean, have a, is everybody here a property owner? Mm -hmm. And there were all long-term residents. Yeah, but that's There's, not the majority. The majority is a second home investor or, right. or, or a vacation yeah. home or an invest, investor. But Outnumbers the residents. Way, I think that there's a, a bulk of people within Ocean Pines that aren't going to have anything to do with any of the amenities anyway. That's our fault. We don't. Uh, people well, I mean, people that rent here people. weekly don't even know they can eat at the Yacht Club. What you, uh, what's the disconnect? I'm trying to understand. Because we're talking about property owners. Right, because they pay the dues. They pay the they assessment. They pay the dues. Right. But then you're also talking about what's, in the, you know, you're also talking about the residents, too. That's and there's very a confusing. disconnect between the two. Yeah. Okay. Well, Marty trained me after two years. Here it is. But you, you, I mean, you, Residents and community appears. The property owner who's renting the property pays the assessment, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And presumably that's, that's, a right. that's a cost that he takes into account when he establishes the rental rate for the person renting the property, right? Right. And that person who's renting that property on a long-term basis or whatever has the opportunity to use the various facilities within Ocean Pines. But if he goes to the, if he doesn't belong to the beach club or anything like that, and they go down to the beach club to use the facilities there or something, how does he, how does he do it? Because he doesn't have a property owner's part. If he doesn't belong to the beach club, he can't. If he's got, if he's got a, a beach club pass, he's got a, a tag that he can. Which he can, and I think your point, they have the opportunity to get that beach club pass, they choose not to do it. Just as if I am a resident. Member. And I, property owner. Pro, okay. Member, <laughs> resident member. As a, as a property owner, and I'm not a member, then I can't use it. Think of it this way. I mean, this board is responsible to the members of the Ocean Pines Association. Which that's what's property. That's what's all of them. All 8,440. That's right. They are proud. That's what our responsibility is for. That's who we address. The, the term residence crops up. And, and Marty is, like I say, patting me on the head for using it because you have to take into account the people who are not residents and who own property. And they have everybody in, uh, did, as much a right as anybody who lives here. And you've got to keep remembering that. It's, it's and they do. All of them. They absolutely do. Well, they, they, do. they get forgotten. They do, yes, legally they do, but you know. I mean, but everything's open to them as well, right? Everything is open yeah. to them. Yeah. Everything. But they may not know it. I think that's where we do a bad okay. job yeah. okay. we could do of that. selling yeah. it. We need to market the show. Yeah. To renters. Those people, yeah. To renters. Okay. Gail? Yeah. Gail Freshmore, 3 Trinity Place. Uh, I have a question in in this respect. I heard uh, someone mention that um, property owners' fees should be lower than uh, other fees for non-property owners. And I think that the property owner's fees should be set and then the other fees should be higher than that as opposed to saying, here's the fee, it's going to be $100, so for the property owners, we're going to make 75 no, let's make it $100 for the property owner and $125 for others. That type of situation. My 
Well, uh, I, as I, long I, as you're not selling a pencil for a dollar, it's a good idea. Just real quick, Dave Stevens says, and I agree with him, he says, isn't it the same thing? And the answer is yes, it's how you describe it. I have in my notes here, Y20 says it should be charged. I have exactly what you just said. Uh, it could be we set it at market and then charge a premium to those right, who are, exactly. but it comes out the same way. Set it at a low if, market, I hope. If the property yes. owner understands that others are, are paying, paying a premium, premium, it might be a little it's more semantics, but it, yeah. easier. The other thing is, on page one of the report, under methodology, the um, one, two, three, four, one down, it says, uh, and solicitation of input from community members through a questionnaire published in local papers. I don't get any of those. And on the OP forum, Appendix C. So the only way that this committee attempted to get information from property owners was through outside local newspapers and not through any kind of uh, direct email, any kind of input of, of, from us uh, based on the newsletter that goes out. Is that what I'm understanding? What is that you're talking about? Uh, John Dr. Dr. Actually, actually said took that care you of have a, uh, a solicitation of input through a questionnaire published in local papers. And if, if people well, there, are there not was a residents John, John McLaughlin was chairperson of this committee, right? <laughs> He actually sent, he had an email sent okay. to all, however that communication is uh, provided to all uh, people in. The same, the same distribution as the e -blast? I'm, no, I'm not certain what it's called. Which is not to all OPA members. Uh, how, are, yeah. are you suggesting that they should have been in touch with all 8,440 people? Through the newsletter, yes. Through the newsletter, I'd agree. Yeah, the I, I think though, I think if you read the heading or the heading to me, it says interviews, discussions, and emails. I think they took, I know these people, I think they took input from everybody, they, everybody, any, anybody they can get it from. And Bill, one other thing, yeah. all their committee meetings were open to the public. And I Except half the public that live here. getting e-blasts telling me exactly when all of these committees were. That was the no, the OPA website has all the committees and the dates and everything. I, I attended a couple of them just as an interested person. Okay, and it, and when the the actual OPA website makes it possible for you to search, uh, I haven't found a, the ability to search on it yet, which the old one did. Um, you could do that, but I had a I had it took me about five or ten minutes this morning to to surf through that website to find exactly what time this meeting was. So um, it's a great website, not, you know, Joe. Click, click. Website, everybody. I, I have made recommendations to the general manager that on the home page we put key events happening so it pops right out at you. Right. And that, that, that would, of course, a lot of things. Teresa's you know. working on that, by the way. Teresa's working on that. But I, I, I do not believe that, you know, from what I'm reading in this report, that the committee actually fully uh, connected with all possible input from I think, OPA I think the members by contacting them through the newsletter. If we are 64 years of age, we don't have computers. Outside news, newspapers. Well, that's not true. Oh, you and, and I uh, don't tell me a lot. We don't get them. I'm not here often enough to get them. So. Mm. Well, and, and excuse me, I happen to be a property owner here with a second vacation home north of here. <laughs> not south. Anybody else got anything out there? No. Joe? Um, Joe Reynolds, 84 Watertown Road. Uh, two points. One, to the gentleman's point back there, and correct me if I'm wrong, sir, but uh, I think the point he was trying to make, at least in my mind, was that while we have 8,400 association members, a lot of them, and uh, 15, 18,000 people here at times, we tend to think of them as a homogeneous group, and they're not. The question is, how many of those 15,000 people, or half of that during the winter, or whatever it may be, are actually interested at all in any of our amenities? And we don't have a clue as to what that number is. But they, those people are our customers. 
the ones that are interested. Um, the point about the increasing number of renters who may or may not, depending on circumstances, are in financial situations that don't allow them to play golf, to go to the yacht club, to play tennis. Um, we don't have a clue, I don't think, as to what those numbers are. And without understanding fully those demographics in some detail, and I'm not so sure the Zogby report was sufficient to do that, we're kind of groping in the dark about making changes and spending money and so on when we don't have all the information. Joe, but could I make a point? I think we'll find a lot of answers this coming year with the census coming out. That's right. I had that because thought. Because that will not point. actually show just property. That the results won't be in, though, for this area by well, 2012. And I think that's the only way we'll ever really find out yeah. anything. That's only for residents. That's for residents. It's not for right. non-resident owners. It would include renters, but too, it, though, wouldn't it, John? It, would it does. Renters. It includes the renters, yes, but not the but person who owns the property. Who but it won't distinguish the renter from It's your residents. Mary, if I could go, I'm, I'm somebody who is... I kind of follow the board closely. I've been here 20 years. Last five years, I've, I've followed this board intensely. Intensely. I know I don't have my head examined for doing this. That's the way it is. Um, and I've been thinking about this for, for some months now, really. The problem with the Ocean Pines Association, Pete mentioned that our general manager is like a CEO. We are a corporation, he's CEO. The problem is in, in how to handle the management of this place is really structural in nature, and it's almost impossible to change. And here's the problem. At heart, the general manager doesn't run this place. We might like to say he does, but the board of directors runs this place, down to sometimes the most minute detail. Now this board may say, oh, we don't do that. But I'll tell you what, I've watched it, I've seen it happen time after time after time after time. And whatever this board thinks, this August, there's going to be an election. There's one every year. Two of these board members will probably change. And the whole thinking of the board could change with them. There are times when we elect three or four board members at a time. So every year, we're subject to this group of individuals changing and if they don't like the if the new group you can set these policies from now to Tuesday. Yes indeed. And next August, if there are four people on the board who say, I don't like those policies, they change them. That's the fundamental structural problem. I don't know how you get away from it. You know what though? We've survived for 35 years this way. We'll probably survive for 35 more at least. Um, is there a better way to do it? Maybe. Um, you could say, give the general manager some marching orders and say, this is what you should do in terms of money and, and making profit or not making a profit on business amenities. Um, and if he does it, he's gone, we'll get somebody else. But you could tell him that, but when the board changes next year, the next board might not have that same thought. So. Um, I think we're just going to drift along. I, we say we don't have any policy on the I sat on board meetings. You know, we got the, in, in recent times, we got the Stokursky era, we got the Duffy era, we got the uh, Bill Zawacki era, we got the Dave Stevens era, we got the Bill Rako era, and each one changes. Bill Rako, for example, even moved the table in the boardroom and sat down the other end where the president usually sits, had, had been sitting, to show a 180 degree turn in direction of the, of the, the association, in his view. So, and I'm not saying that's bad. He has his idea. Each person that comes along has their idea. But we're not going to solve these problems with these committee meetings and stuff. I, I, I um, and, and I'm not saying we, we shouldn't have committees and have input, but our expectation should not be high. We can't have an expectation that this board, taking your good input, is going to pass policy and all of a sudden things are going to change dramatically for the better. Odds are we're going to go along about the same as we were, which 
in the final analysis is not all that bad. It really isn't. I, I offer a lot of objections about things that the board does. But in the grand scheme of things, they're relatively minor when you come right down to it because most people in Pines don't care about it. They don't. If there's 500 people that care, it's probably a lot about the intense politics of all this. But you guys are doing a good job. Every board that sits thinks they're doing a good job. Um, but I just, I, I don't want the expectation level to be too high. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. Anybody got anything else? I do. On the report, <laughs> I'm surprised it hasn't come up to date. Um, but in section, in the operation section four, paragraph uh, D2 is a, a very, I think, significant statement that no one has yet spoken to. And I would like to raise that subject. And what it says is the Board of Directors must determine if golf, OP Golf, is a members only or a public course. All subsequent decisions flow from this. The inability to make this decision prevents OP from developing a strategy for improving the operation and attracting new members. If OPA Golf runs as current, then it will always run a deficit. Past practices should be reviewed to determine impact on membership. I'd like to talk about that for a minute. Um, First of all, I'm not at all certain, in fact, I would disagree that you've got to make that fundamental choice. Um, I think you can be both um, a member course as well as be open to the public, and I think many courses are. Uh, not all in this area, but some are. I can play golf at a number of courses here, and they also have a golfing membership that gives them priorities and pricing and tee times, etc. So. I guess I would simply ask the question, what did the committee see that drove it to this conclusion that it had to be either one or the other? Well, what we saw is that tee times were reserved for members up until the very last minute. So if they played, they played. If they didn't, those tee times were not open for outside play a week or two in advance. You have Ladies' Day, Men's Day, member guest tournaments that are almost exclusively membership oriented courses right which if i'm aware no other public private course works like that now uh, i don't think the clubs like the bay club or some of the other clubs reserve as many tea times and close it down outside public play as ocean pines they okay you're acknowledging they do it you're, so your question is they do it less frequently than we do uh, I think they do it a lot less frequently. I'm not aware of any public-private courses that have members-only tournaments, ladies' day. Did you take surveys of those other courses? Well, we, bel we belong to some of the other courses, and we have to we take surveys and answer a feed generator. Yeah, if I could, i just follow up with Pete. Yeah, I, I disagree with that paragraph pretty much in the entirety. I mean, even if you take the point that you just made, I mean, stretching that to say that our only choice is a members only or a public course it is just flat out wrong. I mean, in fact, there is an in between. The inability to make this decision prevents OP from developing a strategy. Again, uh, not, not true. Um, you know, we have a strategy for attracting new members. It hasn't been in place very long. We've addressed, you know, you know Marty has, you know, for two years been pounding on the TILO Commission. And it is being addressed. Uh, what now. is that strategy? The the strategy? Yeah. Well, which? Okay, let me. Which strategy? With, with regard out, to two times increase or, over, or overall? Increased membership. Increase uh, increase membership. Yeah. The the strategy to increase the well, for an example. First of all, the, the basic strategy is to understand that we're facing a decline in membership, and to try and balance that decline off through outside play. In other words. What we're trying to do is attract the non-golf, specific golf members from the community, other golfers from the community, to play the course. Okay, one part of that is, in fact, making Teal of Times accessible. Now, early in, that happened early in this year. We subsequently found that the specific implementation of it was not what we actually desired, and that was changed, correct. toward, corrected towards, uh, towards the end of the summer. The hiring of the golf marketer 
on a part-time basis, I can't stress enough, uh, which, who is heavily incentivized and highly qualified. When I say highly qualified, she knows specifically the contacts and the people you need to do to bring in outside work. Part of her responsibility is also to look at the, you know, the membership. I mean, I could go on about the number of but things that have been done. Okay, well, we made this report. There was no golf marketing person. There wasn't, we, we interviewed the golf the person that ran the golf, and that information did not come out. So we made our... It took for, yeah, excuse me, it took forever to hire her, but, but before that, we had a golf task force, which, which was in place when you had this. And one of the, the earliest things, and Marty's, uh, you know, encouragement, was to bring back in golf profit builders who the previous board had hired to examine and come in as an independent. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm, all I'm pointing out is that there, there has been a lot done, and it's the jury's not out on whether or not we can make this or succeed as a balanced members' court. A large percentage, I mean, I think it's about 35 to 40 percent of the golf lounge played on the Ocean Ponds golf course are played by OPA members who are not members of the golf course. I mean, it's a significant amount. And, you know, this, this just, you know, past practices should be reviewed to determine impact on membership. And this has been done really, I, I, don't, I don't know how much more detail. You Dave, I'll tell you what is true, is that if the current, if it's run as current, it will always run a deficit. It's, it's, it will, and, and as long as everybody five, keeps yeah. talking about it, that it's a safe cow, and that, that nothing can be done about it, uh, is, it's, well, it, it's, but, it's but, and, and again, you, you, missed stated, point, you, excuse me, you stated that you were a golf member and all that, so everybody has their own active grind, but to, but, but to, to dismiss this out of hand, is is wrong well, any kind of analysis of the golf would be i think welcomed by a majority of the people in ocean pines from a cost benefit analysis i don't know what kind of metrics you have in place to judge the effectiveness of your marketing person what 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 well, success I, I, know, I, board three I, weeks. I know you don't Doesn't matter. i know you don't bruce you, you don't. can have metrics that whether she's even hired yet i know you don't right but, but that's only because you don't. That doesn't mean that there aren't metrics in place. Are there? In fact, yes. Are there? What are yes. they? Would you like me just to just send them re to me. recite? Send them to me. Recite. She is incentivized based upon a, a specific process. Okay, forget it. I, I retract the question. If, if there are it's metrics in place, I, my, points, my, my, my point still stands. It, it, the, the golf, the golf, uh, whole golf issue should be, continue to be addressed, and it shouldn't be. Uh, dependent on uh, people's own acts to grind. Well, I think you missed my point is that in fact, in fact, if you don't pay attention to what is being done, if you don't accept the fact that there are efforts being made to do this, then you're always... It doesn't matter if efforts are being made. The bottom line is, is this a success or not? Right. It doesn't matter. You can spend yeah. your whole life and millions of dollars and trying to make it better. And how, much, how, fast, how fast do you think you have to be to turn something around that's been declining for years? You have to be, you have to be reasonable and check and, and look around and, and see what's happening. You have to be reasonable over, right, over a reasonable period of time. Right. And that, in fact, is what exactly what's being done. And it, has any of it been successful? Yes, it is. We have had increases in outside play. Okay, let, let me go back to the amendment, uh, why, why we came up with this. We were not aware at the time we wrote this, the number one was a marketing person being hired to address some of these issues. Yeah. Okay, so that's so the basis of this. Were thing. you aware that there was a task force looking at all these issues? Uh, well, we, it's been in existence since when, January? Well, we, we, no, we, let, last. Okay, good, 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 good. good. Marty, well, That's Marty good. what were you going to say? That's good. I was just going to say, good. impact of special interest groups. Yeah. <laughs> I just want to... I'd like to say... No offense meant to these two <laughs> fine golfing members. No, I'd like to say that, that Dave has admitted himself at this meeting that the expectations that he expected a year ago were not implemented until just recently as far as... The, oh, you're right. It's okay, been so, painfully so slow. So there's been some problems, and, and we need to understand that we have in fact implemented some things and let's see if they're going to change you know, uh, but i'll tell you what you don't get better unless you understand what's being done and that's the only point i'm making just try and understand what exactly is being done and where we can improve you ever heard of the, 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 the insanity the definition of insanity is is doing the same thing 
over and over and expect, expect ignoring history. Yeah. Ignoring that, history that's, that's and doing it over and over. Bill? Yeah, well, that's because you don't know what you're talking about. In this, in this whole discussion, of, this whole discussion of, of it's right here, right here. Uh, no, what's being done to try to improve the uh, number of, of, of play, play time from outside people, what have you. I have not heard anyone refute from the golfing community. I haven't heard anyone refute the issue of tee time. I was tied up. And this gal might be the work, best marketing golf person in the world. But if, if she doesn't have access to the prime tee times that outside players are going to fail. Come in, then, then how is this going to happen? How is how's she going to be successful? And, and I'll, and maybe I, I'm, I'm hearing something, but I haven't heard anyone refute the issue about tea time. Stop arguing. What, what is the issue about tea time? This gentleman said that there are days that the course is tied up, there are times in the morning. And I don't, yeah. I'm not a golfer, so I don't know what the pre mode no, times right. are. There's a women's day and but that's the an issue. Day. If, those, yeah. if those days are tied yeah. up. Well, they're not all day, but I mean in the morning they morning are. Morning tea time. They, they are. Well, well, they are. And, and I would think, again, not being a golfer, but a, a traveler, if, if I'm coming in for a golf weekend uh, with a group of guys, I would think that playing in the morning would be more advantageous than coming to play in the afternoon. Everybody wants 8-10. Everybody <laughs> wants 8-10. I understand, but so if, if the membership has all those times tied up, then Ocean Pines Golf Course is, is not a... It's not true that they're all tied up. Well, all right. Be careful. Bob, 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 careful. It, it is Bob, true. Bob, 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 in general about golf and tea time and things such as that. I've been looking at the data for the last two years, and I have the data. And if people want to look at the data with me, rather than use generalizations about what they feel is going on and what they think is going on, I'll be glad to sit down with them. I see no reason to style up a bunch of data at this point in time. Or I would ask that they do their own independent study. I'll give them my data. They can do their own independent study and then make recommendations based on what they see in the data. Has outside play increased and tea times been made available more than before recently? Outside play, Haggis play and outside play is set two or three months ahead of time. You can get it done. I'm talking about a, if, if, a, if I want to play golf and I pick up the phone, I'm not a member, can I get a tea time? You should get a tea time. Okay. That wasn't the case. That was not the case uh, uh, through a July. Few ago. Okay, Bob. Just I, I yeah, just want to jump in here as a last twenty minutes have been about golf, folks. I appreciate all the effort you all have put in. Obviously, golf is is one of the most heated because it's, it's got a lot of the cost. I don't think we're here to debate what you guys have found. We're to take the information, use it to make better decisions moving forward. So. Here, here. I, I understand the intensity, but I assure you, everyone here appreciates the work and effort that went into this report. I just want to make sure that wasn't missed over the golf, golf tension, because that all, it's always a tension. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and let me second that, Bob. Despite my objection about specifics, I appreciate this too. I, just want to make sure I, I think it puts things out and on paper, right. and no. it gives us something to, to point at. Okay, uh, Gail, you have something else? Yeah. Um, one, one thing. Uh, it's not about golf, except it Good. could cover golf. Um, there was there was comment in here, I can't remember exactly which which page it was on or what section, but uh, the, the costs uh, for, I believe they used member passes, meaning coupons, um, and the, to extend their um, validity. Uh, has anyone ever, I, I know it's come up about uh, assessments being paid uh, monthly or before they're actually due, which is fine. But is there a possibility of considering that fees for golf, for swimming, for other things could be paid as you as you go monthly? Um, the other, uh, my other house, I have a monthly fee. My, uh, my fees are paid monthly, and it, they include everything in the community. But if I had to pay that once annually, I would be strapped for cash at that one time. But by being able to pay them every month, uh, I'm sure that Ocean Pines does not pay all its bills the 2nd of May with the money that's all supposed to be there on the 1st of May. They have bills throughout the year, so 
it's it's a good thought. So maybe people who can't pay Just for it annually can pay monthly. General Manager, what is your membership? About that particular yeah. Thing? Um, I've been in places where we've broken up the amendment or the uh, the, uh, annual, the fee. annual fee into different increments. Um, understand that when you do that, you you affect your cash flows, and those cash flows are invested in money that are invested in, in securities that generate income. And I'm speaking. Gotta, I'm sorry, Tom. Specifically of the amenities, not oh, the, talking about the amenity fees, not the assessment. Oh. Directly she, for the amenities. You did say assessments, but that's okay. I, yeah. I understand. My, what you my, my fee that I pay in my other homeowners association includes everything, mm -hmm. uh, and that's monthly. Here, the, the, right. the assessment is annually, but maybe the, the uh, amenity we, fees could, could be allowed monthly. We actually do have a budget plan, and very, very few people take advantage of it. I, I, I guess I haven't seen it advertised. For golf and for tennis. We do? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Bill? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, golf gets a lot of attention, and rightfully so. Sure. If, but if you look at what's going on here, if, if you look at golf over, say, five, ten years, whatever, losses are going 100,000, 150, 80. 137. 137 or so. Over again. five. So we're getting all this attention on golf, and this committee rightfully focused on it. But I wonder how many people aquatics made in association realize that in just two or three years, aquatics went from a 90 or so $100,000 profit center, and the last numbers I saw projected to lose this year alone $234,000, which is more than double what golf is going to lose. So, I mean, the, let's start talking about swimming. Yeah, some right. people don't some, focus on it because it's a relatively new law. It was not the law. Okay, is anybody getting else? Okay, Tom, discussion did. I'd like to have our general well, this manager paragraph, though, make some observations of what he's heard today. The first thing I want to do is congratulate the committee. This is a very tough, tough subject. I don't think we have all the answers here, but I think we've got, we've got some hard questions and you've pointed out some uh, deficiencies that we have to. Uh, attack and uh, and I think we're serious about doing that um, the second thing I would like to mention is the, the term business amenities has been battered about here a little bit but everyone should know that in the community association industry there's no such term it doesn't exist an, an amenity is supposed to be something that enhances your lifestyle enhances your quality of life within a community and that's what we have here. We have amenities that that um, are uh, intended to enhance your lifestyle. And I think that that as we go forward and we start making these things better, we're actually doing that. Tom, can I make a correction? We never intended the amenities to be a business. But we said that they should be run in a business-like manner. So let's make that differentiation. We never intended to be run as a business. Actually, I don't think it was you guys that were using the term business. Other right? people, Phil. So. Other people. Um, a couple of other things. Um, one of the recommendations was a standard procedure for developing fees, and we haven't taken that approach, and we haven't taken that approach for a specific reason, and it's because we've looked at each one of them as as individual units and said, you know, how do we how do we meet the uh, uh, the competition, and what's the, the demand versus our supply of, of opportunity here? We we have crafted them on, on an individual basis rather than uh, on an overall one. So there's logic behind it. I'm not going to uh, say that we couldn't do a standard one, but we've used logic based on supply and demand criteria in establishing the fees. Uh, Bill Wentworth mentioned something kind of interesting, and, and that was you know uh, the elimination of, of amenity fees and incorporating them into the annual dues. Um, is certainly something that I think merits some consideration. Now, obviously, there are certain uh, things that we can't actually do that with. And it's very impractical to try to do that with the marina. Uh, I look at the number of um, parking lot slots I have over the beach club, and I say, just I don't know that that really works all that well. When I've got 200 spots and I've got 8,000 members, uh, I'll be stacking those cars on top of each other. So, uh, or you can build the Ocean Pines garage. Yeah. 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 But I think that, you know, among some of the other amenities, there may be some uh, uh, things worth considering there. Because not only does that 
one of the other, the, 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 the back side of that is it may be an opportunity to uh, reduce expenses where you've got less uh, uh, manpower needed for collecting fees and, and doing that type of thing at the facility. So there's something to consider there. And the last thing was the, uh, one of the recommendations for where the uh, amenity fees for OPA members must reflect the significant savings and the suggestion was 20% over non-member fees. And uh, as I read this last week, I, I, I was struggling in my own mind to say that um, is there sufficient latent demand in the pines for new members as the fees go down? For example, if I cut all the fees in half, but I double my membership. And um, I didn't think that that would happen. Um, and so I struggle with that. I appreciate the fact that they should be discounted for members who are paying dues and, and actually uh, uh, contributing to the overall well-being of the community. I'm not sure if, what, if it has a, a strong impact on the number of sales I'm going to have because I've done that. And those are my comments. Hey, okay. Tom, quick question. How many, well, this is just a, this is going to be a swag, but I mean, on a typical, you see advertised, uh, Raven's bus trip. Members, $35, non-members, $40. How many non-members do we get on those trips? Uh, you know where you're going to get non-members? Uh, uh, just how many? I, I don't know. I, I a lot? Probably say 10% or less. But, but so, I, I mean, it's, we're not talking about a bunch. I, I, would, I wouldn't think we would. I wouldn't. I didn't know about it. But I tell you that only because I haven't looked at the numbers. So I'd could, love to know. It, it could be. All right, do we have any questions from the press? Charlene? No? Anybody else? All right. Uh, I'm going to take exception to what Mr. Reynolds said uh, because really good. Yeah, <laughs> good. Because uh, I believe this board will come up with a policy that uh, will reflect uh, what we think the philosophy and some of the big picture items are going to be. Okay, it's not going to be easy because the philosophy, as you've heard today, is. A lot of people have a different idea. I'll just give you one idea. Gail says we should charge more to non-members than members. So the advertised price should be 10 and non-members pay 20. Whereas I, who have been involved in sales for a long time, believe that we ought to charge 12, but automatically, wherever you go to the club, you, 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 you get your bill, it's automatically 10% off. That's just a philosophy. What I'm saying is it is tough to get everybody together. I mean, I. I, down in Florida, there's a place that uh, has a package deal and a huge HOA where you get everything. You pay, you pay a little bit more for a couple things, you know, like golf. But I mean, everybody's a member, you know, and that's a good idea. And I, how are we going to come to resolve all this? But we're going to go up with something because we have to. We can't let this thing go. Okay. The second big recommendation I think is you create a marketing uh, person. And I think we need to decide this, and we need to either decide yes or no whether we should do this, okay? And the third individual thing I saw up there that's, uh, to me, of most important is mentioned throughout this report is customer service, customer service, customer service, customer service, customer service, customer service okay? And that alone, now I think you guys are really nice because you kept mentioning it, but you didn't say the customer service was bad or good or absent. But I think the message is pretty clear that we need to do better in this. Everybody, okay? Up and down. And I think, I mean, we've talked about this now for a while, but I mean, I mean, really, everybody from the person who, who meets you at the desk when you go in to pay your assessments to when you walk in the club or everywhere else. I mean, this is just, we gotta do better, okay? And uh, I think we are gonna come up with something I never said you weren't. Well, uh, it's not easy. It's not easy. And as far as keeping the policies going, you've got to make sure we get candidates who replace those who depart who are willing to uh, spend the time to get into this stuff. So I want to thank everybody for, for, for being here today. I want to thank the committee for its report. And uh, we've got a lot of work to do. So unless there's an objection, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you.